My name is Ayanda Mkuchulwa, um, but the streets call me Aiza. Yeah, yeah. so we here. Yeah, you know, man, the streets are in the street. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Pramanda actually asked us to come talk to you. You know, I didn't really know. I've never actually spoken much. I'm usually the hype man. No, put your hands up. That's what I usually do. So it was a bit, it was a bit tricky for me to actually prepare anything. So I took the Zuma route and I got a lot of papers. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me look professional, right? Even got a book as well. Yeah. I might not even read from it, but it's here. And, um, thanks to everybody that made it uh, to the symposium. You know, um, could have been anywhere else in the universe, but he chose to be here. So basically, I wanted to talk a bit about the UNISA Poetry Society, which is um, based in UNISA, you know. So I actually collected a few uh, scribblings that I put together in terms of proposals and Facebooks and all of that stuff, so we could get a clear picture of what UNISA Poetry Society is, you know. Um, the UNISA Poetry Society is a student organization that takes pride in providing platform for the living arts, a radical form of expression that combines a collection of mediums which are presented in a stylistic collage of performances. Now the society is a well-established organization recognized regionally as one of the biggest poetry movements in Swana currently and continuously giving birth to new organization, performance groups and subcultural movements. The organization itself was established in 1995 by only a few UNISA students who shared the same love for what the society has dubbed word art. You know, we took it to the next level. Now, we started hosting weekly sessions uh, and they've been reeling in crowds and all sorts of numbers and variations ever since the beginning. We are based in Sunnyside campus, we're in the amphitheater, which is now the home of the society and has been graced with young veterans as well as living legends. And the session has been blessed to have hosted uh, the likes of Ndadili Fifitladi, uh, even Vangi Kanjo, Professor Piti Ganduli, Natalia Mulibadzi, and you know, countless other poets and writers. Um, so basically what we do, we actually develop young writers so we can cultivate distinct abilities by honing individual skills of expression. Well, and this includes playwrights, poets, authors, dramatists, the work. You know, um, we provide an open platform for budding artists in an environment that serves as inspiration and stimulates growth for the individual. Now, the purpose of the society is to open up, basically, the gates for everybody who is in performance art. We started out as a poetry movement, but we understood that poetry has a larger scope than merely a written word. You know, um, in terms of understanding what people can do with the word, uh, we recently hosted, as well, constellations here where you found that acts put together different mediums. You have people write, uh, Zeta was writing on a chalkboard here. We had uh, dancers coming along as well, you know, uh, actors being part of the performances as well, which increases the scope, and I think increases the scope of performances as we know it, because we don't like to box our work. You know, hence, I know a lot of the individuals that are part, part of the society don't necessarily refer to themselves as poets, which is the direction we would like to take, whereby now we, we actually hone the craft and people master it to the point where they refer to themselves as, art, as artists that paint portraits with word, you know? Um, because like I say, with, with all of these happening, we want to take it to a professional level. You might not be doing poetry as the only thing, as a source of living or a source of sustenance, but you owe it to your audience to actually deliver a quality product. Time is one of the most important commodities we have, if not the most, 
is most important. So I can't be wasting your time calling you to the session and uh, come here and, I don't know, render poems that are half baked, half great, not ready. I'm asking you, do you know who I am? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, but we do not want to, let me put it like this, we don't like the concepts of making celebrities. You know, and we actually would like for poets, for writers, MCs, actresses, actors, painters, sketch artists, and so forth, to actually put their art first. You know, let's see what that does. We hear you, you know, and we understand you, the artist, and we would like to put the work first. Hence, I find that um, a lot of people who have come to our sessions that we host every Wednesday have been actually shocked at some of the performers we have because they've gone so far away from the box that you can't even locate it anywhere in the radar, you know? You know, because it's about the craft. It's no longer about the person. Hence, we have even moved away from writing, you know, merely about emotions and feelings and opinions, but we would like to take it a little further where you actually master the craft of putting words together, you know. Uh, I know that El Fifitladi usually speaks of word consciousness, that you need to be aware of each and every word that you utter, you know, each and every letter that builds that word. And we also focus on concepts of depth of thought, whereby you actually think extensively about what you're writing. You know, hence I say people come to the session get shocked because you go home with a heavy head, you know, because <laughs> you, will, you will actually experience some of the writers, they came, they will be on the open mic today. So uh, you will hear what I'm talking about, basically. So the society, the UNISA Poetry Society, basically, has, is not the first poetry movement in the city and we thought it would be best if we actually look back to movements that have actually paved the way for us currently, you know, looking at there was Uhuru wa Maisha as well, where now there was the concept of togetherness in poetry, there was positive engagement where you could speak freely, where even if there's a poet you can come perform on stage but you could even get the crowd to interact and actually go in depth into that poem. Like, is it as dope as it sounds, man? Like, what type of space were you in? Which means now you grow as an artist as well. You widen your scope, you get advice from the audience, the people that you're actually dealing this with, dealing, uh, dealing with basically, yes. Uh, they feel, you get feedback directly as well, you know. Uh, we look at uh, bigger um, poetry movements, obviously no chem chair with Miss Vangi Ganjo, you know, which has, has paved has paved a golden highway for many poets. You know, I know a lot of poets have grown through no chem chair performance in terms of engagement. You know, they've come across a few books as well at the session. You know, it's always been love. We also share relations with the Street Poet Society from TNT. Um, well, Flex, Brother Tostin was the chairman of street poetry, am I correct? Yeah, at one point, you know, keeping the movement alive because we actually embrace the brotherhood, the sisterhood, whereby now we actually want to make this a family where we all know each other at least, you know, and that's how we will grow, at least that's how I believe we will grow. And then there's the Pansy Poets, hey, are you part of Pansy Poets? Never heard of Pansy Poets? I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm very surprised. Fancy poets from uh, University of Pretoria, they, they are what you call the religious poets. But I wouldn't want to say that, you know, because I think they refer to themselves as spiritual rather, you know, but uh, they're mostly Christians. And which was a different take, you know, uh, to poetry as we know it, because all of these societies have their different takes of poetry. And the Pansy Poets, I know uh, the likes of KB Kilobyte, we had him here for Constellations as well. You know, they mold their po 